The smoking sea has claimed lives, and the summer sea holds beasts beyond imagination. Yet perhaps the sea that brings the most fear and awe holds no water. But is the sea of warriors, a horde unlike any other in Planetos. The Dothraki Sea. Grasslands stretching from the Roinar to the Bone Mountains. In the past, these lands have been ruled by many tribes, each of them focusing on fighting each other. Bloodying the reeds and wheat with blood. More and more fighting. Until the Dothraki Sea ran red with blood. That was until the Unifier came. The Carls of Dolo conquested their way all across the waste. Their early victories brought many to fight along their side, for their Carl had his hair now longer and greater than any other, a sign of a warrior who had not been defeated. Those who chose to fight rather than kneel to their clear Carl soon found themselves defeated, broken down and beaten. They too would submit or die, until all of the sea served under one man, with the exception of only one small tribe. Now, the Dothrakis had a problem. They exist for war. They exist for combat. Without those, a Carl's life is empty, useless. To sit there and gorge oneself on luxury is a waste to them. No. The only pleasure comes from their blades. And so raiding returned. Not just a few raids, but many. Constant, focused raids. They could attempt to make moves into the Roinar, but the rivers and the mountains stopped them. Their old plucking point of Atlantis found itself under new colours. But those colours intrigued them. There was no place as lucrative as North Valyria. Many would consider it foolish. Why would someone go off and fight in the land of dragons when they barely could launch a bow into the sky? A land that they were certain to die within. For as soon as a dragon spotted their army, they would be burned until they were nothing. Why would they fight? Well, the answer was simple. Glory. Many would die, of course, but the ones who won? A Carl who managed to steal gold right from under the nose of a dragon lord? Well, they'd go down in history. And if one was able to steal from the dragon king himself, they might be able to stand up to Carl Dolo in strength. Soon enough, the situation began to get worse and worse, too bad to ignore. Constant raids in Valentis and Marine were driving Emperor Valerian mad. He wished to focus on what mattered, his colony in Valyria, his expansions to the walls in Illyria, the wealth that was coming out of his lands. Instead, his armies were constantly raised on a constant march to defend the major cities from raiders over and over. It was costing him good money and good men by having to keep them constantly readied with arms and guards. It was becoming a problem problem that would not go away. Some of his advisors suggested granting gold and boon to the raiders, but Valerian was no fool. Give one gold, and soon they shall all come for gold. He could afford it, yes, but why should he reward them? When would they stop? The only thing Adovraki respected was steel, but they did not fear it, no. You could not make them fear for their lives, for death was almost expected on these raids. They did this for the thrill, the desire. Perhaps, Valerian thought, he could do of the same. He had made his name in war, in fire and blood, and now he sat the throne for decades. He had almost forgotten the taste of battle. His son and grandson grew and grew, showing his line was stable and secure. He had his legacy now. <laughs> he would rule in blood for millennia, it seemed. So perhaps, he could indulge himself. He could give himself what he'd been missing. A fight. Valerian would wage war on Carl Dolo. Valerian would burn the Dothraki Sea. Or so he thought. Little did he know that there was a reason 
that the Dothraki have lasted as long as they have. There's a reason they didn't fear the Dragon Lord. Little did Valerian know just how hard his task would be. Hello guys and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, a game of thrones. We are still playing as Emperor Valerian the Black in his 52nd year, looking as if he's about 100. <laughs> and we are in a pretty fun situation, of course. Magor, our heir, Magor the Messy, and uh, Jaehaerys the Fairest, or Jaehaerys the Fairest of Illyria, are uh, married now with plenty of kids and a couple of bastards along the way. But, I mean, Jaehaerys is uh, beyond reproach for this. We, you know, this is a problem, but uh, at least the dude died. <laughs> And uh, we are now in a situation where AMR is married to Yunka as well. We're, we're, we're slowly reunifying everything, bringing the Cinder families back together. Of course, the only non Cinder ruling family is the Aenars, ruled by Lord Paramount Daemon, son of Lainor, who was the son of Baylor the Bastard. But they've, they've become more of a recognized line now, even if they still continually seem to forever hate the king. Over and over they hate the king. It's a problem, but uh, I'm sure it could be dealt, dealt with. So weird. Married is the bone way of all places. So we have 7 out of 6, and we've had this for a little while because we have a Valyria here. No updates yet with Valyria. It's still a base colony, it's not become advanced yet, but we're we're holding out our hope that it will advance. Dana has reached twelve. Is this my grandson? No, just my Oh, it's Orion's son. Okay. Orion, of course, uh failed to take over the crown of a uh, Marine. But we can't hate him for it. I always go for the bard mocking option because it just makes sense to go kill a bard. Because why not? See, he liked it. So his Valance is at war with. Yeah, they're at war with the Khans here. Arisso. There's a capital over here still. So we... I don't get this. Daniela tried to hatch her eggs and has instead lost the eggs. What an idiot. How do you lose the eggs? One thing I have had mentioned is I could reforge Chimera. Which I, I've talked a while about considering doing, but I think it could be quite fun. <coughs> Alex or Zario? Uh, Alex, because he actually is he more competent. They can't equal on competence. We'll go with Alex then. Mother's grief, black death, glory, skin peeler. Goodness, lots of fun options. Dragon Bane is like a pretty cool one. Black death is also cool. I'm just going through them over and over again until I, my mind decides which I like. I mean, I like Kingmaker because Chimera was the sword that sort of denoted the completion of North Illyria and also, you know, the Empire itself. Maybe Kingmaker. Yeah, with that cool curves like that. Uh, Kingmaker, I believe, is based on Aegon's sword. Wherever the hell Blackfire is now. I assume the Iron Throne has Blackfire, or I'd hope the Iron Throne has Blackfire. Yeah, he's got Blackfire. He has both of them? He does, he has Dark, Dark Sister and Blackfire. Oh. Guess he's he's fully got everything back. And he wears King Athan's crown. Huh. Interesting. I mean it to me that looked like is that Viserys' crown? Just renamed? 
crown of the rock crown of wizard. So it has all of the um, local crowns as well. Yeah, so they get renamed because this is obviously the un the unworthy's crown, but it's called Qu Queen Sharon's crown. This is Maker's crown. I'd I'd assume this is for Ceres's. Although for did for Ceres just wear heiresses? I can't remember. Would you like to give a name to Chimera? I mean, I think Chimera makes sense. I can't think of a title that'd be unless I go for one. I was considering if I did rename it would be Ash. I kind of like Ash, because we, we have reformed Valyria from Ash. Here we go. Our new design. I like it. I do like it. The golden tips, because we are all about the, the, the wealth, the power, and of course, the majesty. Married to Alix's first daughter. Just to screw with him. And now Bafen has uh Alex has a uh, Bafen. Another Bafen. Named after his grandfather. If you have a better name than Ash, let me know. But I think Ash makes a lot of sense, because I've sort of referred to Northern Lyria as well as, as uh, the Empire of Ashes sometimes. I believe someone also suggested calling it the Empire of Ashes, which makes sense. Did he... Did he actually just immediately die? Of poor health. He had his kid. His kid is not even a year old. And is now the leader of North Valyria. That is... Wow. I didn't know it could, it could get... It, they're in a very weak spot now. I could revoke their titles. But I don't see much point in it, to be fair. What's with all these duels? My wife wants to duel? No, it's, it's the... My bodyguard, Prince Luxal, is wanting to... No, you want to duel my, my rival Rainies, my wife. No. You're punished for wanting to fight my wife. Imagine walking up to the king and saying, My king, I want to I want to fight your wife. <laughs> Let me fight her. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Felix looks very cool. Just look at that. Blowing hair. That's true Valyrian right there. I'm just waiting for the day he actually re-inherits or retakes geese. Because he absolutely should be trying to retake geese. Get a larger army here. I may just give them a dragon rider. Um... Jahira has a dragon, doesn't she? No, I thought she she tr tried to tame one. Or at least go over where the, uh, some of the dragons are. Yeah, I, I knew Tarion is with uh, Valex. Tarion has one of my favourite um, arts for dragons in the mod. Uh, let's put Valex. Well, Valex is already leading it, uh, but we could put. Uh, oh no, we'll, we'll we'll leave Jahira in this army. I can switch, yeah, switch to Darren because he's he's one of the master fighters. Just because maybe I don't want to risk my daughter and the future queen in this fight. Well, I've lost another dement size. What happened? Is it my state stewardship or has my own stewardship dropped? No, my stewardship hasn't dropped. I thought because I know age does drop it. Are they losing? Oh my god, how bad are you guys? You actually, this is the first time we've lost one of these hordes. Uh, 
fact, the king's going to have to come deal with this now. Unless this marine army's going to deal with it. This marine army should win. They've got 9k. Barely, though. How good is this commander that they've got? He's winning the majority of his fights. He's only... Uh, he's okay marshal. No, that, that's, I'd say that's actually bad marshal. All things considered. How many? Like, it, this is getting a little crazy. It's it's come, It's become not too often. We may actually have to just deal with these guys because this is this is getting ridiculous. Who's this guy with? Yeah, it's it's all under dollar. Maybe I have to just force him into submission just to stop attacking us. But my eyes want to turn towards. I mean, Brothers is becoming more and more of a threat. I want to turn my eyes towards uh, the Freed Orders, reclaim that. You know, get the borders of the Freehold back. Oh my god. Ugh. Have to yield. I, I really... I should be a better fighter than that. And now I'm wounded badly. Okay, now I'm an awful fighter. Swollen wrist, swollen ankle, old age, craven, and wounded. Just all stacking on top of each other. Of course, they're going to siege this down, which is going to ruin the uh, colony, because that just consistently happens over and over again. As again, I, I find the raiding a little too annoying, because it, it, it just goes off duke titles and not off king titles, so you can just be raided by basically the same kingdom a hundred times over and over and over again. It's it's meant to be one of the downsides of playing in this area, but it's honestly, it's just because it's more of an, a nuisance than anything else when you get to this point. Now scarred. Oh my god! I oh, I'm, am I only getting negative events for you, Valeria? Have one positive event, please. I beg. Just. <laughs> I guess I did get the amphitheater one. Let's get a uh, Felix on this army again, just so I'm not leading it. Melion March. This is the city of Melion March with grayscale. Ugh. It's, it's probably this castle. Still no update on the uh, upgrading here. Okay, there we go. Valantis is dealt with it. Oh my! Give me a break! Come on. I'm, I may just attack Arisso at least. Just get rid of Arisso. Dolo is going to be a separate problem, but I think we just need to get rid of the Arisso tribe. At so the very least, if I Dragon Conquest them and force them to bend the knee, they'll stop attacking us. In this. Mishira and Rosa met enemies in the duel. They fought each other fiercely, but Princess Shahira uh, prevailed in the end and sw had a swollen wrist from it. The anti nomad. Does it give me a truce from them? It says it ends their act, but I don't think it... Is it permanent to think so? Man's vengeance for the Mad Lands to declare war. Yes, you can't do those ones. Am I able to do it to Dolos since they just attacked? No. The thing is, conquering them is that none of their lands get colonized. 
still think it's worth just... It's worth just fighting back against these nomads, because I'm just getting tired of them. There's too many on our borders, and we need to try and actually secure our borders for once. Only 3,000 in the capital? Damn, this upgrading effect is really taking its toll on us then. Um, all meet in Mantaris. I mean, Arisa won't set a chance against just uh, just my small army here. But... Did he surrender? Oh, he surrendered. So he's he's uh, I'm his suzerain. He provides 39% of his income to me. It breaks when the suzerain dies. So when I die... Okay. Uh, Tributio can call their suzerain into wars. Suzerain can call the tributary into wars. Tributio cannot refuse calls into defensive wars. Uh, they can fight other tributaries and can intervene in tributary infighting. But that should mean he can't raid me, as far as I'm aware. Oh, did he surrender because he's fighting another war? Against Arisso the Fowler. Okay. Well, let's still get our army together then. Looks like we're fighting a war regardless. But I, we actually get to be... We don't break apart for this war at least, so good news for me. Let's uh, unsiege their capital. So basically, he swore fealty to get somebody to join his war and protect him. Spending a whole bunch of wars. He's just going to run. Minus 40%. Did he lose a battle to this guy? Happy to take a charismatic negotiator. So it seems like in both these cases he began the war, but he's struggling to win them. No, he's, he's defending both. Valyria had a thriving harbour crammed with ships from all over the world, but no more. Over the years the harbour has fallen to ruin, slit in debris and the water causing it to be unusable. Our stewards in Valyria insist they need more resources to dredge and rebuild the harbour, otherwise trade will be impossible. Yeah, we'll pay for that. Although I... Would Valyria have been coastal? I think it would have because of the fingers. But the only way Valyria is coastal right now is through this tiny sliver here and this tiny sliver here. I don't know if Valyria would have had that port specifically in its city in it, at its height. But I'd assume it at least have something near, near to that. At least you'd hope. That's how easy it is to siege uh, uncolonized lands with a dragon. It's so weird that Lys uh, owns this. Because it's it, as far as I'm aware, it's a ruin. So maybe somebody took it and then conquered it. This, the Lys Leonese Disputed Land. What a weird title. Fighting a prolonged war here would just be painful. If Felix has a new rider, it's this rail. Marine just keeps stealing Ifelix. You wish to become. You're not sure you can be my master of Ifelix. You are a more direct vassal. Hmm. 
really want to... If I push forward in this war... Lord Mataris wants to marry Cyrus. Uh, no. I won't marry her off until... Because I may marry her off to her brother. Let's marry... Yeah, marry Baynar with... Uh, uh, Ishain or well, Sainris is the oldest. Am I not able to? What if I do it the other way? Yeah, there we go. Keep the Valyrian blood pure. Where is his capital specifically? This is his capital? Or oh, that's where he is? Apparently this is where he is. At least we'll go over this way and possibly siege here. It's only blank. I assume maybe it's, yeah, it's meant to be Valerian, I would assume. Either that or uh, Valerian just really defender of imaginary people. All non Valerian provinces in Astapor. Controlled by Emperor Valerian or Lord Alter, Freeholder, blah, blah, experience religious unrest. See if we can catch him. This. Man needs a relief force. Father in law, Lord Aaron of Green. Passed away. The colony in Gardark failed. The hell is Gardark? Uh, is it one of these up here? Oh, it's probably one of these two. The wedding of Prince Jeharis of North of Illyria, my dear son, to I'd assume. We'll travel to the wedding. This be his uh, his wife. Yes. So he, my second born. Or is he my third born? He's my third born, but obviously uh, Maris uh, died. So Maris's death has made him at least second in line. What if I leave it? Stop sieging? Huh? What? How the hell does this work? Uh, let's replace Valerian. Get Daron on this. Aim and maybe can marry Jahira. And give him diplomatic. Come on! They just spawned out of nowhere! Like, it's. <sighs> this mechanic is genuinely, seriously getting on my nerves with just how it's so. It's too, cons like, consistent. This is like the fifth one we've had in four years. Honestly, maybe the sixth one we've had in four years. It's, it's becoming far too common. Like, at the very least, I'd say this at least makes sense that this would be... Parian. Did Alex die? Oh my... Died frothing at the mouth. There is no way this man was not poisoned if he died frothing at the mouth. Why is everyone useful to me dying so quick? Ugh. 
Uh, Baina will get a good education, of course. Probably Marshall, I think, is best for him. The dragon Ilifinos, owned by Par Lord Paramount Rhaegal the Second Cinder, has died in the Black Cliffs. She had been suffering from a wound which had festered, causing her to pass away. A legend fades at the age of only 31, one of Iphilix's children, of which we ride the other. Hopefully ours doesn't suffer the same fate. Declared new Kiskari Kafin de Jour war over the Bone Coast. So he's going after the Bone Coast. Okay, that war's done. I can't figure out which is his capital. I think this is his capital? Because their symbols are... No, that's his capital. He lives over in Fogo. Okay. This army is going to Fogo. And then I'm going to be sending my... Um, basically for the, the entire reign, or the entire rest of my reign, I'm going to be sending me to train troops back in these provinces. Because these troops are going to be absolutely decimated because of these wars. Would have thought having a dragon would mean I could just fly over there and burn his fields, but... Uh, not when attrition exists. Face after him. Valerian in the middle should mean we have a dragon leading this. Now, my uncle has died, which has caused Fusrodox to flee. We're gonna lose this battle! Where's the dragons just aren't being used in battle then? How are we losing this? Are you seriously telling me that the horde is going to beat a dragon? I know a Dothraki horde in an open field is a hard thing to beat, but we do have a dragon. I I feel like this whole episode is just me showcasing a significant amount of frustration. That that three-year-old sounded a lot like a man in that screen. But I, I will not lie, the longer you get into CK3, the harder it is to hide a lot of frustration in this game. And I'm, I, I may just start paying off these hordes, because these hordes are a serious point of frustration for me at this point. There is, there is a lot, the later you get into the game, where it it's becomes tedious. Because I know I'm going to win wars, but I can't actually fight the wars. Arian Tainos was imprisoned by the Queen. It's the trial. He, started, uh, he was found innocent. Uh, sure, let this guy handle it. And of course, while I'm handling all of this stuff, his armies are in a completely unrelated area for no reason raiding rather than defending his capital from the 7k troops and the 2k troops. It's just full full siege <laughs> I, I I'm almost hiding to hide my genuine tiredness and frustration at the moment. Which is weird because I've literally I literally took a break from this game a bit so I could just Calm down and then not feel so stressed, but it is. Am I? Am I? Like, I, I. And now all the work I've done is for nothing because now he belongs to Fogo. I honestly. I'm just going to pretend that this entire area does not exist. This entire area is so badly done. That there's no point. And the only way you can actually fix this, because every single generation they'll just flee and escape from being a tributary again, is either fight them consistently over and over again, every single generation, or go province by province, slowly colonizing them. <laughs> it is, considering how expensive colonies is, it is just not worth it. I'm just going to start paying them off, because I make so much money that I would rather just do that than keep fighting these armies over and over and... <laughs> I genuinely, I genuinely 
genuinely cannot take this. I, I will be honest, for those of you who've been watching for a long time, I've never re-recorded a video. I so badly want to re-record this video right now. Because I'm so frustrated. Sure. Fuck off. Like, I don't even care it's 810, I just don't want to fight this anymore. It's actually just tiring to me. Consistent hordes, over and over. And another famine! Can I get one inch of luck this session? Oh my god, I just keep getting famines and hordes and raids. Can I just get a positive event going on? Oh no, they're all fighting each other, not realizing that every time they siege, they're going to end the colony over here. Why are they fighting? They literally cannot fight because they will just destroy their own castles. Stand down. Ugh. There we go. End that goddamn war. Uh, I'm gonna execute him. Uh, my daughter in law Visenya Cinder has died. Uh, I'll attend her funeral. Of course. She is a Cinder, so she deserves uh, the respect of a Cinder. Why do we own this? When did we take this? I do not remember doing this. And Calf is sieging down New Geese while he's sieging down the Bone Coast, which I guess, to be fair, is the war goal. Oh, and Bragel's at war. And apparently I'm there. I'm in this battle while the war's going on because I was at the funeral. Okay, it looks like Fogo's at war. You know what, Valantis, if you could just handle the war for me. Oh, you're even doing a colonization war. You know what? She's immediately the best character in the game because she's going to try and colonize this and just finally deal with this. Boehner is a genius. Oh, well. Also still a helot. We just can't get out the family. Uh, we will get focusing on duty. Go on, do your duty. What I want to look at is, do I currently... I don't think I currently have slaves. I don't. That would be a problem. I need to probably get on colonizing. Or, uh, not colonizing, uh, conquering with some slave raids. Am I not getting to reappoint my old council? Or is this my old council? Because I don't think... I don't seem to have the option to make any of the lords back in these positions. He's leading... Where's he leading troops? Oh, because he's leading his own army. Ugh. That is a bit frustrating that he's leading it, because I need him to be... I may actually just have to appoint someone else. Yeah, you know what? Jahiro will take the role. I know that's going to annoy him, but we need people retraining the troops over here because we lost a lot of troops. Yeah, that's a... I mean, obviously that's not a lot, but that's a thousand. That's a couple thousand. And then here, we're, we're down six thousand. A little, a little back and forth here between Geese and Carr. Oh, yeah, another wedding between... My son is now getting married to... Uh, Alassane. No, they were all... Wait. Is he even taking Alassane as his first wife, even though he was already married to Shayna? I'm not sure how that works. You know, you could switch your, like, first wife. 
I guess technically they're all equal, so I don't think it inherently matters. But it's a bit weird. Surely, like, I do all these things to make him like it, and he still hates me, because I'm, what, I'm indignant. I see. He greeted us warmly to the wedding. Peppered wine was served, and the most lovely music played throughout the whole night. And the ceremony shall be held upon the morrow. <gasps> Valerian had a dragon's whip added. Did he just hatch dragon? No? Hmm. A fine tradition. Surely wouldn't be banned by any decent ruler. Because Geese doesn't have a dragon. So he is he is going purely off might of power. To which I think he's outnumbered, yeah. Does he have an ally with him in this at least? No, interesting. If I plot to kill this guy, that'd be fun. <sighs> Isn't this, this is, I swear that this exact horse lord I've seen at least five times. I'm going to say no because he literally can't siege and I'm going to wait for the other guy to deal with it. <laughs> Should we get the bare, bare basics? I don't. I wonder if Larian would even like acknowledge her existence, considering the 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 manner and means of her birth. Still trying to ador adopt the life adopt adorbed. Trying to adopt the lifestyle, but in order to ensure the divine purity of their bloodline, Saint Lucinda and Prince Bayrinson have been uh, wed under the blessed auspices of the gods, ensuring fullness and order. Now the dowry is due. Isn't the dowry literally to myself? This is my gr it's my grandson would be upset. Sure. You know what? You're getting a tiny dowry. I'm basically paying my own family at this point. What's the Valantis fleet doing over here? Yeah, I know you're in this war, but why is your fleet all the way over there? Where's your army gone? She has a 40k army, but I don't see where it is. And the Iron... What's the Iron Throne doing over here? That's perhaps more interesting. We'll get to this in a second. So, hang on. Larian the King is at war for a slave raid. Two separate slave raids. But the Rock stole the King's Landing. They seized and... Captured King's Landing. Still ruling from Castle Rock, though, but that's got to be a huge F you to the Iron Throne there. Taking King's Landing from them, of all places. Um, I mean, yeah. I'd like to get to press accept. Oops. Recent conversion of Vedas lands to Valyrian. I'm not doing that myself, am I? I assume it's probably my vassals are doing it. Because as far as I'm aware, religiously, almost this entire area would be... Or my area would be uh, Valyrian. The lands that I directly own. Yeah. So there's no religious conversion I could do over here. So it's these lands over here of the Harpy which have been converted. And a couple um, under Valantis as well. This is the one that would have huge resistance. Trying to turn the law to Valyrian would have massive, massive resistance. The famine's ended, but the colony is still going. Sure, you're actually good. You can come to my court. So the Valantis army's over here. I guess because they're... 
I don't even know what's going on with in this Fogo war. The, the AI is going to just bash itself against each other over and over and over again because it's just going to keep fighting against Fogo, whose main capital is over here, which is so unbelievably stupid that I'm very tempted to just make save edits to destroy this whole area in some way just so that this can stop happening so consistently because it's too common now. Like, the AI is literally just going to kill themselves on attrition going up to Siege Fogo, which is also now being sieged down by Adam, which I... Or I guess being re-sieged by himself. Okay. With 200 men, because it's so weak that literally you'd have to keep an army permanently here to hold it, just because 10 men already need to siege that place. Uh, Ray is the rider. Ooh. Meraxi is now 225 years old, living in the Red Pyramid in Astapol. Is Warren Calf still going on? Sieging down the Bone Coast again? Oh, and Calf itself has been sieged, so he must be doing pretty bad in it. Oh, he's fighting multiple wars at once, interesting. But he's actually winning the war overall. Is he, has he taken the capital? Um, no, he's not taken even the first level yet. And he's actually stuck because he doesn't have enough men. Curious. The Liberation of Atlantis. Alright, how big an army are we talking here? Oh! Gotta actually commit forces to this. Uh, I don't think there's gonna be enough troops in Illyria, no, to really get those involved. Another thousand here. Get all of these in Mantaris, and then we're gonna go help out Valyria here. Where do these guys even land? I don't care. Is that Hesh? Yeah, I don't care. They're going to do this, and then they're going to siege one of these two, which are colonies, and the colonies are going to end, and I'm going to get the event for the hundredth time telling me, this colony is being sieged and could fall apart. I genuinely wish the AI just didn't siege colonies, because there is absolutely no benefit to them seizing a, like, sieging a colony. They, they are actually just give them. What? The hell is Lazo? Where is this? Are you. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what causes these liberation wars, but whoever's running these lands needs to try at least not pissing them off so badly. I may actually have to go deal with that army and hope Valyria can deal with. or Val uh, Valantis can deal with this army. Because she does have enough men for it. And these, what this is a smaller land. This could be taken very quickly. There's also, probably in this entire region, not 80,000 men. <laughs> like, I don't know where the 80,000 is even coming from there. They, they, they just... Every single person was so upset that all at once they rose. Oh my god! City of Nugis. Oh, the city itself, because the guy's incapable. Let's raise another army on the way. Or two. Have all these armies just merge up. They're actually going to win this war before I can even get over here, by the way, because of how crap these lands are. Meanwhile, Volantis is splitting her armies. 
My, I think the, the sheer enthusiasm in my voice showcases exactly how I feel about uh, CK2 at the moment. <laughs> it's so weird because I keep saying I love CK2 more than CK3, and I do, but then something like this happens and it's hard for me to deny that this is just absolutely stupid. Oh my god, like, and it's consistently... Early on, it was so, like, every session there'll be one or two. I think there's been nine at least this session. And they're all coming from like vassals of this guy. Not him, vassals. It's 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 just too much, honestly, to deal with. Trying to micromanage all of this stuff. Because I really don't want to just conquer everything and win the game instantly. Which I absolutely obviously could do. What's Who? Who? Is that just saying they have more men now? <sighs> um, see, see if she can get kind from this. There we go. Because envious is, is is a trait that I would prefer no one to have. In, in all honesty. It's one of the ones that I, I genuinely think there truly are no positive uh, benefits to it. Let's make sure this actually has someone leaning it, please. Regal. Uh, you know, I'll move Larry into this army. And we'll get Jamin here. And then this army can be Dayrun, Hiris, and Zano. And then this army is going to try and catch him from the other side over here. There we go. This is what dragons look like. Inira Kinrose has been captured by Volantis finishing their work. And Volantis is actually going to be competent enough to maybe go and fight another war now over in Fogo. How are they doing in the Fogo war itself? 47%. Yeah, they just need to keep going. So, thank God. He's finally split apart. But watch, watch this splitting apart means that he's actually gonna. there's going to be more war against him, not less, because this Fogo is still a problem. I may split Fogo and say that it's just to see if that helps things out a bit. Just because it is, it is too common at the moment for it to be fun. Uh, the car 4 is going well, at least. By the looks of it. 57% in his favour. He could he could really win the Bone Way here, which which would be a or Bone Coast, sorry, the Bone Bone Ways in uh, Westeros. The only thing that could actually lift my mood fully would be if we could get this to an advanced colony. But at the moment, that doesn't look like that's going to happen. Okay, win the battle here. This army's going to come down here and siege that. Nope, not offering anyone gifts. Valantis can deal with that. Honestly, I just feel like a little bit the game should take into consideration this is an art, this is a nation that has how many? 100,000 now? No, but still 85. It's it's every uh, like every week I'm getting one. And they're see <sighs> And they're sieging colonies, which is extremely just so much fun and so helpful. It's 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 tiring. Like this is so common and it's so annoying and it's just over and over and over again. We should be able to end this. And hopefully just raise these fully before they take any more attrition. Lordship of Atlantis. So the actual title itself. Okay. Now we just need her to seize Fogo and she'll actually have normal borders. I'm not going to question why Mir somehow owns North Solaris, but... Oh, it is over the road to them, that's fair. Even if they are literally falling apart slightly. Oh, it's this thing that's getting siege. I genuinely, if we lose this one, I don't care. Okay, they're gonna maybe yeah, that AI's gonna kill that one for us. Raiders fighting raiders at this point. Bogo accepted the peace offer. It still says it's seized though. It is a colony. I'm not sure why it's saying it's sieged. But that clears up the borders a little bit, and it's just a, overall a good uh, good work by 
the Queen to exert a bit of dominance over uh, the Khans and the Karls after... Well, I mean, we own this land for a tiny bit of time as a tributary, but... Evil way. I am going to call it here for this episode, and I think this episode, usually I like to have a very optimistic voice. I think this episode, I was clearly not too happy, and I think that's got, got a across a bit. It's entirely the, the mechanics that are causing it, though. I, I will take a look, I will try and fix things around, and next episode we'll hopefully be able to actually focus on our own internal realms, rather than dealing with everything up here over and over and over and over again, because it is getting very boring. <laughs> And hopefully with our focus on internal matters, we can get maybe a good event or two going in Valyria, which might, might get us closer. Because once we get Valyria, we can start expanding out this way. And one day, my hope is that Valyria will be our capital and Illyria will be like, a, will be our Dragonstone, you know, will be our heir's title. But that'll only truly be once we have an empire of Valyria to call our own. But we'll have to see if we can even get to that point. For now, this is uh, well. This is it for the episode. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I believe this will be episode twenty, and if it is, then we've made it quite a distance. And I'm looking forward to seeing where we go from here. Thank you guys so much for supporting. Thank you to all my Patreons. If you are interested in giving me any further support, helping me out on my series or my new series, which I hopefully will have come out by the time this video is publicly released. Uh, please do support me on the Patreon, support me in the comments, subscribe, tell people about me. It really, all of it helps. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next episode. Until then. <laughs>